21st, uh, regular select board meeting to order. We've got Brad Town, John Quinn, and Flo Smith is on Zoom. virtually Zoom. Uh, any additions or changes to the agenda events? No, sir. Public comment? <laughs> Uh, we have a lot to talk about tonight, that's for sure. All right, here, no, no. amusement ordinance uh, permit request for Vermont Runners. Yes. I think Mr. Emmons is with us, if there's any questions for him. This is a race that's done every year, isn't it? Yeah, uh, that's correct. Uh, we've, hi, hi there, uh, Bob and Sue Emmons. Um, uh, thank you for having us to the meeting early. Uh, the, the race has been going on for more than 30 years. Um, it's a it's a five mile race, um, and um, it's one of our more popular CVR runs. Were you aware of any big complaints in the past about it? No, nope. I haven't heard of any issues. Uh, move approval of the permit request for Central Vermont Runners. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor, say aye. 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 Motion carries. Aye. Thank you. That was easy. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, nice. thanks so much. That was great. Nice. That was a pleasure. Thank, Thank you. Bye-bye. All right. All right. Good Samaritan sidewalk uh, approval agreement, uh, agreement approval. Um, so I haven't read this yet, but I know that one of the things that we did with Town Fair Tire Tire was talk about maintenance and replacement. So do you know that if this is similar or the it, same it is, language? It's included in there. But that I know it's in there. I was wondering if it was uniform language. Yeah. I'd move to approve the Good Samaritan sidewalk agreement. I'll second. All right. Any further? Yeah, the only question I have is um, it looks like they, they agree to assume all responsibilities. Um, are they carrying? Are they carrying enough insurance if someone was to fall on the sidewalk? Or great question that I don't know the answer to. I'll have to follow up and find out. Okay. Insurance company. Well, the the sidewalks in the town right away, correct? Or the state right away? Actually, in the state right away. Right. Right. We're nothing to do with us. All we're approving is the uh, agreement that they'll maintain it. I'm sure the state okay. carries their own insurance for this. It's a, yeah, right. It's the state right of way, but I mean, who owns the property? Well, and if they're who responsible for maintenance, if they, they maintain yeah. it, yeah. yeah, they default. It all, it all comes back on them. It all come back to the state. Yeah, well, I'll take an action to follow up on insurance coverage, and I'll talk to Rob as well to make sure we understand it that they that they have enough coverage. How's that? Yep. Yeah. Okay. All right. Any other discussion? All those in favor? Say aye. 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 Motion carries. The uh, treasurer's report. Okay. Um, right now, for our life insurance and long-term disability, we have Lincoln Group, which is a benefit that we have as a town. Uh, the Leagues of Cities and Towns are the ones that sponsor it. They're going from Lincoln Group to a company called National Insurance Services, which they say is uh, about the same price, actually probably a little bit lower. I've got the contract. I'm going to read it through. I'm going to send it to the select board for the next meeting, but mm -hmm. someone, um, you have to authorize somebody from here to sign it. Uh, but like I say, I've just, I just got this today, so I will send it to you, and then on the next meeting we can discuss it, if there's anything to be discussed on that. Okay, I think the next piece that we want to discuss was reserves, okay, because we have only this meeting to carry the reserves over to the next year. Mm -hmm. So I think that Vince has put something in your packets. Is this it? 
memo? Yep, yep that memo. Yep. Okay, and I can just briefly discuss what we have going on here. Um, with the building maintenance, we got 23681 for that wall that got damaged, and that's not going to be repaired in FY21. We, you know, I don't know when it's going to be repaired. It's because of COVID. So I want to carry that money through so that we can spend it on that project. Okay. Um, PD fund, all that money for the PD fund is donation money. However, some of the donors are specific about what they want it spent for. And so that $8,300 was spent specifically um, from Professional um, Institute. And they had told the police officers that they wanted to spend it for evidence trackers. And that's what they spent it on. So I want to decrease what we have in the PD fund by that amount that was spent for these trackers. Okay. Okay. On the recreation board, I want to decrease that amount for money spent for the ice rink and ball field maintenance. Uh, capital budget, forty-five thousand dollars for the police car. It's on order. We were told to be here May thirty-first. It's not going to be here, even June thirtieth. Right. Um, so I want to carry that money over so that we can spend it in FY twenty-two. Okay. Highway materials. That was the grant that we received for thirty thousand through thirty-one sixty-six from the state, and we have specific goals that we were going to spend it on. Uh, however, that hasn't happened, um, so we'd like to carry that through. We were talking about, I think it was Crosstown Road, they were going to do some ditching. Um, they were going to be down to me pretty soon, and you know, so I'd like to carry that over. Why? Was there a reason given on why it hasn't happened? No, I haven't talked to Tim about that. I did I talk was... to Tim, and he just said that he's down. He's going to be down a person pretty soon. They're trying to get other projects done. I was under anything's going to happen while we were no. while the road was closed. Yeah, that's what he tells us. Yeah, yeah. and that just didn't happen. Yeah. Okay. But I would like to roll that over so that we can use it for the next year. Because being a grant, we have to account for that. So it has to show what the money is spent on. Our computer, $2,300. We put the replacement for a computer, either my computer or Tom's computer, which neither one of us have used, hasn't been replaced. I'd like to carry that money forward just in case we need to replace one of our computers. Because both of our computers are getting old. Mine, I think... Well, it's, it's seven years old, I think, and Thomas might be older than that. So probably and there's idea. not money in the current budget, the 22 budget? Uh, no. 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 Okay. I have money in there. Uh, Conservation Commission, that was, okay, that's kind of a melange of, melange of money. That we had, we'd gotten some money for the illegal tapping, $5,900 as a surplus. Uh, but we did some brush hogging and bridge work. So the difference is an addition to the Conservation, conservation Commission of 2531.93 to add to their Conservation Commission fund. What, what uh, bridge work did we do? No, we're talking, look, that bridge the, is for vast, is for vast. We had to buy the wood. Okay. Railings or something. Right, we yeah. had to use that out of the bridge. Out of the conservation budget to buy the, uh, the materials for the uh, mm -hmm. Irish Hill, for the Irish Hill Bridge okay. replacement. That was something that was authorized one yep. as well. Yep. But at least we I did with a remember. small surplus. Yeah. Yep. Okay, uh, capital structures, 150000 I've gone to the attorney on that one. Capital, we had $250,000 that we set aside for capital structures for, it could be for highway equipment, it could be for a structure. Uh, and then we ended up buying the grader. Well, the grader we got a loan for. So that to me says, well, you know, we still have money in there. But I want to be certain of this. So uh, what I've done is I've called Rob Halpert and I said, Rob, can we spend the surplus money that we have in there? And he, you know, we put an email from him along with this. And it's, to me, I'm reading it that he's saying yes, but I want to be certain before I ask to set aside that money. I just want that one to have a little caveat saying, look, if Rob says yes and tells us why and we can do it, I really want to do that. Okay, we have spent some of that two hundred fifty thousand dollars because we have put money into that culvert. Okay, we spent like right. fifty-five thousand of it. Plus, I'm anticipating we're going to spend another thirty thousand before this year is over, you know, June thirtieth. And then I don't know if we'll have probably another bill from Otter Creek. It's possible. So all I'm saying is I would feel comfortable if we would reserve one hundred fifty thousand of that as long as we can. Uh, and that way we could have it to use on this culvert that we're going to be doing in FY22. Okay. I just, to me, that would be great if we can do that. So I guess that is the reason for everything I've asked for. And like I say, the 150000 I'm pretty sure we can do it that way. But I want to make certain that Rob gives me his blessing on it. Mm -hmm. And he didn't call me back when I called him today. And you have the email that he sent. 
Okay. I don't know why, but I thought we'd put that money down on the grader to, to lower our no, payment. We, we, we borrowed the whole thing. Next year, we're going to pay it. Well, in December, uh, there was payment due, and we're going to pay the whole thing. Because that was what we were going to do, is pay the whole thing off. Okay. okay. That was the goal, anyways. Okay. Thank you. You have a better memory than I do. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, and stuff like that, yeah. <laughs> well, probably have the time. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you. Okay. Do we need a vote on this? Yes. Yeah, All right. So I'll move approval of the FY21 budget item reserve adjustments. Second. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Uh, aye. All right. Now we got the, uh, is that it? Perfect. I'm done. All right, fiscal year 2021 auto approval. Yep. Okay. That, that's in your package that's as well. Package. That's just. Report. This is the third year. Uh, we haven't. Um, when we bid for an audit, we always bid it for three-year term. This is the third year that three-year term. We will be having a single audit this year. No, no doubt about it. Okay. So that will add an extra thousand dollars. Yep. So this is just saying, and this is boilerplate. This you sign every. We sign every year. And um, so they're just, you know, they will not do the audit unless this is signed. Okay. I'll make a motion to approve the fiscal year 21 uh, audit approval form. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Loan resolution document approval. Yep, that one's me. That one is. Uh, that's really for Tom. It's his project. But that, <laughs> Was that staying up the structure? Right? Yeah, that's just giving me authorization to uh, sign the documents on regarding the loan information for that for that sim loan. Are there any uh, dates around this as far as like start and stop of when the process would for the project? Yeah, uh, we had the uh, the pre bid meeting uh, with the contractors uh, last week. Um, a real start date, not yet, um, but. Since we're talking about the Fisher Road culvert, I was going to save it for the round table. Um, I think it's worth, with all the things going on, with the, the cost of the culvert and the bidding that's, that's coming up, we should probably have a separate meeting if you guys agree this week, a short one. A short one. It's probably going to be an hour to discuss all the issues with Fisher culvert and the options that we have to that are put in front of us right now to try to get it done this year with the exception of the, uh, the temporary paving. Um, to get through the winter, or uh, to let the bidding run its course. The big, the big thing is the paying for the culvert and taking it out of the bid up front, so they can get started because it's a precast on the work for the culvert to get it in time. It's going to be very tight as it is, um, but I will have Otter Creek here uh, for a separate meeting to go through all the details of that um, with the board. Uh, to explain the schedule, proposed schedule, and the situation and the options with, with each one of those. In your package that I gave you, there is a, a pile of documentation around that from both Otter Creek, the concrete manufacturer, uh, the pricing, uh, and some estimated dates in there as well to give you a chance to review it before uh, we have a, a discussion and you guys make decisions on, uh, on the options. So it's a little it, it's a yeah. long answer to a yes or no question for you, John, but that's yeah. really it's, it's a little annoying because we hired Otter Creek to get us through this process and they laid out, you know, a timeline and and we're not there. They haven't come close to meeting it. Yep. Right? So exactly. So there there's just a lot surrounding that uh, right now. But I think it's you know what have the delays been? 
I, I, no. That might can answer pretty simple. You no, know? I don't know. What reasons right. for all the delays have been on that at this point? Um, so I think that's something that uh, Mr. Clark should probably answer when we have our meeting. Uh, my question to you is, um, what's a good time frame to try to fit that in this week uh, to keep this moving forward for you? And I'll try to keep it uh, brief, um, Otter Creek, and we have to keep it to an hour or less. He has to get us through it. Let's uh, let's get through the resolution and talk about it at the, at the yeah. end. Okay. Yeah. If you don't mind. No, um, so I move approval of the SIB loan resolution document. Second. Any discussion? Those in favor say aye. Oh. Aye. Motion carries. Aye. Police chief hiring review and update. Uh, so, as you guys know, we lost the officer Parker probably around February. Um, took a job at UVM, uh, higher pay, uh, an opportunity to get free tuition. Uh, so we've been kind of running with that with Sergeant Monteith. Uh, Officer Piquel still not able to work. Uh, we've been fortunate enough to pick up Officer Peter Vosberg. Uh, he should be starting with us in a couple of weeks. Officer Vosberg was with Berlin PD part time, but just prior to my arrival, he took a full time job with Northfield. Um, since I thought that and wants to come back. So is, just just to be clear, is this a formal request to hire? Just an update. Oh, okay. Yeah. We did have a uh, someone we were looking at hiring full time who had no experience. Um, got him like eighty percent through the process, and he backed out probably for another job offer closer to home. Okay. So how many so how many positions do you have open right now? For Bosford would fill our last uh, vacancy. Okay, but then we still have someone um, medically out. Uh, I expect Sergeant Monteith would be out. Be back. Within a couple of months, he seems to be progressing pretty well. Um, Officer Piquel, I have no idea when, when or if he might return. Uh, so on paper, we're at full staff, but in reality, we're not. The summer would kind of be a, a, a rough road. You have someone going away from military leave. Um, Officer Picor, who's been really a huge asset for us, is. Uh, Moving out west, uh, so the summer is going to be tight. So, so we'll have another vacancy. No, this she's officer Picor has been with us in a part-time capacity, really helping fill in on some of the vacant spots on shift. Mm -hmm. All right. Is there anything we can do to help? No. At some point, um, if we kind of get an idea where people are with their injuries and when they may be coming back or if they're coming back, talk about over hiring. Even though we're slotted for nine full time sworn positions, to hire a tenth position because in reality we're not paying these people who are on workers' comp and they're not able to cover ship. So that's the conversation we can have down the road a little bit. Might make sense if we're over capacity, but you know we're not. We're, I mean, we're running over budget with overtime. I think probably in a lot of scenarios too, right? Absolutely. If you look at the overtime so, cost, it would it would pay for another officer right now. Right. Yeah. Overtime and our part time officer budget, we are over budget. Right. And we're up of full time wages. Well, when do we want to 
to start talking about that. We can talk about it next meeting. Yes, I mean, I you know I think there's a lot to consider looking through our union contract and mm -hmm. when you add up time off, and our overtime would certainly be cut down, but it wouldn't go away, and our part time wouldn't go away. I think I think is fair, wouldn't you say, Chief? I don't think the part time budget will ever go away, really, because um, you're gonna cover when people are at training or on vacation or if injuries come up. You have to use the fill in the caps. But other than officer people, we don't have anybody to even work part time. We can't even find part time workers to work, let alone full time people. We are fortunate to work at yeah. Well, maybe we could all, yeah, just be prepared to talk about it at the next meeting. Yeah, yeah. Chief, and we'll just put that on the agenda for the next meeting and have a discussion about it. Okay. Does that make sense? Put some costs together. Mm -hmm. Some budget information to put yeah. together what it's costing us today. And right. Anything else, Chief? Nothing. Okay. questions? Nope. Thank you. Will you need me to further on? I don't think so, but I hope to see you tomorrow. <laughs> yes. Right across from this driveway, Chief. <laughs> Excellent. Yeah. All right. Have a good night. Thank you. Take care. All right. We got DRB liaison discussion <laughs> report. Bob. I'm going to hear your invitation. Um, just a quick update report where we are. Um, it's been a light year for DRB. Uh, we have not had a lot of applications, not a lot of activity out there. Uh, we've seen that on several different fronts. Um, uh, we have a perpetual problem, which is we're down a member. So we really need to do something about recruiting another DRB member. We have a couple of alternates. Um, Troy Nelson has been helping out quite a bit, as has Josh Fitzhugh. But Josh is out of state half the year, so yep. uh, so we're getting by. It's just not, not a problem. We didn't have meetings before, but, uh, but I'd rather not. We really need one more permit full time member of the uh, department of the uh, DRB. Um, we had been, we had started. A plan to advertise for these volunteer positions. Are we still following that? Yeah, yeah, it, it, it's it's out there, but I'll uh, I'll take a little look at it. It's, it's need to sort of, I think we need to rethink that. As I as I look at all the volunteer positions, mm -hmm. we need to have some kind of ongoing way of letting people know that there are openings recurring. That we need, yeah, yeah, we need to have. Very frankly, there's always openings. Um, mm -hmm. they, my position can be had real easy. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so we, what we need is people to get involved. Um, uh, I've been chair of the DRB for 21 years. That's a freaking long time. Excuse me. Long time. <laughs> so, you know, we really, some fresh blood wouldn't hurt. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, well, have you put any thought into how you get somebody on the board differently? Just care, cause we yeah, could use I, that with all our I, boards. I, 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 you know, I ask. I, I run into somebody I think might be interested, might be a good candidate, and I'll ask. I haven't had any luck with that. Um, uh, my contacts in the community are not as great as yours are, perhaps. Um, what, do you, what do you think of Front Porch Forum? Do you, do you look at that? That seems to have a pretty wide I do. Reach. It, it, it's, it's not a bad place to do it. Um, I would be glad to post it there, or we yeah. can post it, uh, we can have the town post it. I think a regular post there wouldn't be a bad place to talk about it. We yeah. do have them on the website. Yeah. Yeah, it was on the website. The website was I, I'm guessing the web, website is not looked at as much as the front porch form. It's the like traffic. It's, you're not yeah. driving traffic to the yeah. website. Yeah. So you can use front porch form to drive traffic to the volunteer yeah. positions. Yeah. So some way. Yeah. There needs to be. Yeah. Yeah. We, we did a blitz of, you know, well, probably a month and a half ago now. Right. I think we recruited, uh, I forget how many vacancies we had, but we've recruited to actually just recently had about seven appointments so far. Yeah. yeah. Um, so I'll take a look at what we did a month and a half ago and uh, 
Appreciate Try it. to do another blitz. Yeah, well, I think I think you did a good job playing fill the planning commission. Yeah. Uh, I, I know that, I don't know where you are with the conservation commission, but uh, they're full. Uh, they're full. So uh, and maybe, the maybe, my, maybe the uh, DRB is the only one that's, that's light at the moment. You know. Um, it is a little bit more difficult in that it's a quasi-judicial position. Some people will leer about that. Uh, you really are, you know, making judgments. You're making rulings, uh, making determinations. So uh, some people may not like that. Uh, others, uh, I think we have a good board. So I'm, I'm not worried about that part. It's just that you know, if one more person dropped out, we'd suddenly be scrambling. Having Tour as a backup is, is excellent. Having Josh as a backup. You know, Josh has been on the DRV for years. But, uh, but it's, not, it's not a major problem. I'm just saying it's a perpetual problem. Right. So I'll, I'll take that one on to, you know, to look at right here, what we can do to uh, ramp that up a bit. I think the biggest problem the DRV has had in the last uh, few months, probably last six months now, is we're dealing with new regulations. Uh, there are extensive changes in our regulations, our land use regulations. Um, I, for one, who use the same regulation for almost 20 years, I'm not struggling, but I, I, I don't, I don't assume anything anymore. I basically open the book. <laughs> so it's, it's, and we're wading through them. We're finding some glitches. Uh, you, the board will see, uh, the board will see requests for changes in the future. I've got sort of a laundry list going on. I'll talk to the planning commission about it. I think most of them be in agreement with what, I, what I'm finding. There's a few things I'd like to see a little bit differently. Um, some of it going back to the old, some of it just not being covered, you know? Yeah. You find so, that, but yeah. you find that any of these changes are holding up developments or any, you know, building or improvement on properties? No, I don't think so. I, I don't think so. I think um, all in all, uh, things are moving fairly smoothly. As you probably know, Justin, there's just not a lot of demand right now. Um, we've had some, some good applications. We've had some interesting stuff going. Uh, some of it may not go anywhere. I, we spent hours and hours on the application for a new um, automobile dealership. Right. And I think that stalled somewhere. Well, there's no we, cars. <laughs> beyond that, well, yeah, that's, I'm not sure why it stalled, but I, I'm told that it may not go through. Um, so it, it's, it's, it's somewhere, I think it's in the regulatory process though, yeah. but I think it's a state regulatory process. Uh, so we, did, we did give it approval with a lot of conditions. Um, I guess the other thing I would, uh, the only other point I was going to make tonight to you in the report is I, I think we're very fortunate to have very competent staff in the form of Tom Podowski and Christy Flynn. Um, it makes our lives a lot easier when somebody's doing a good job recording. Obviously, Tom does a good job running running that part of the show. So we feel informed when we get the stuff and we know where to go. Uh, applications we get are thorough. They're usually very complete. Um, that's very different than what I dealt with 20 years ago, yep. uh, where people came in with a $2 million project on an envelope. Hand, hand sketch, you know, uh, yep. that don't happen anymore. <laughs> okay. um, so, so that part's good. So I think this is more of a planning commission question, but was Carol in at the last meeting? I wasn't able to be in attendance at. Uh, briefly, I think. Yep. So one of the things that I had as the town's growing and changing, and it was our with our emergency services like the police and the fire department, and what you see for. Um, you know, if someone a, a, has a permit in for a, a building that may require apparatus that we don't already own or, or any of that, how we can not put that on the, necessarily the homeowners, uh, or you know, how, how can we head, protect the taxpayers from having to take on the burden of some of this additional cost for maybe like one or two projects where all of a sudden we're going to hear from the fire department where they need this or the police department where you know, we, we don't know, we can't really anticipate what our increase in our budget is, but how would you recommend that that works with the Planning Commission and the Development Review Board process? Well, two parts. Uh, first part is we do solicit input from both the Fire Department and Police Department on all applications. 
So if there are issues that affect uh, either department um, or the highway department, yep. uh, we ask for that input. Uh, we really haven't had anything come up to the point where it says uh, something needs to be bought, there's, there's an apparatus issue, there's right. a road issue. If there's a road issue, we don't address that. We just make it a condition. Right. Uh, if it's a money issue, I would have to go back to the new bylaws to figure out whether or not we have the authority to do that. That's what um, I was curious about. But I think we do. I think we do. I, I think there's authority in there to assess capital. Um, as condition is a bare minimum. Uh, it's something that we could say you need to talk to the select board about before you come back to this office. So, I'm speculating because I need to read the letter of bylaw because the final analysis, while I have opinions on what things should happen, I think the DRB's role is to interpret and, and make judgments on the bylaws. They are what they are. Right. You know, it's not, you don't make new rules. You right. Know, you need to follow the Okay. I was just curious. Yeah. Um, so I can see where, as the town grows yeah. it, like, <laughs> tremendously, it could impact. We, we might not see something coming, and I think that that's a huge piece that well, clearly kind of catches um, off guard. There were plans for improvements to the hospital, that was which have things. since fallen through, uh, yeah. uh, certainly on hold as a bare minimum. Um, that would, I think that would have been an apparatus issue. That, that was one of the ones I know yeah. of, for sure. Yeah. So I, I think that's one of those, and uh, consider they don't pay any taxes. There's a, there's a reason to have some kind of discussion there. Right. So I think we would need to look at the bylaw. I, I'm confident there's a tools within the bylaws to deal with that. I don't know that we've ever implemented that. So if not, uh, we should put that on your list. <laughs> <laughs> we, do, we, do that. We, we, we have been faced with the issue, so nobody's really studied it. <coughs> okay. Excellent. Any questions for the board? I don't think so. So far, we haven't received too many complaints, so. <laughs> but they would go to you guys. <laughs> right. Well, thanks for coming in. Appreciate Thank you. Thank you, Bob. Uh, yeah, neighbor, you've been driven up, you know. Um, um, the, um, I'm also serve as your representative of the, of the Planning Commission, Regional Planning Commission, mm -hmm. and also serve as your representative of the Transportation Advisory Committee for the Regional Planning Commission. So, um, I thought I'd take this opportunity to give sure. you a quick update on both of those uh, briefly. Uh, the Regional Planning Commission, um, uh, there's not been a lot going on there lately. I think part of it is they're definitely handicapped by the fact that they can't work in person. So everything's remote, um, as all of you are aware, uh, and you've had to deal with yourselves. I think this reduced some of the activity. Most of the activity of the Planning Commission has been through their different committees, and they have quite a few. Um, responsibilities for approving town plans, uh, the two towns revised plans, and uh, 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 um, brownfields uh, projects and stuff like that. Um, I, I serve on the project review committee. Uh, that committee uh, also looks at all major projects within Washington County, and we determine whether or not they're significant in, because the uh, Regional Planning Commission is a party all application, Act 250 applications. So any Act 250 application that we deem to be significant, we, we may win in on. So uh, good thing, bad thing, if you overdo it. Uh, but, um, so I serve on that, on that committee. Um, uh, the primary projects we've seen in the last few years have been solar. <laughs> That's been the bigger projects. Uh, they've been more controversial because one of the biggest problems we've been seeing with solar is, is what impact are they having on the uh, uh, distribution system. Mm -hmm. We put solar, we put a major solar system in the middle of nowhere, uh, can the distribution systems handle it, uh, to they provide storage. So, it's, it's, so that whole energy planning thing is, is uh, definitely consuming the regional planning commission as a whole. Mm -hmm. uh, because it's not just about where we get our energy from, how it gets paid for, but also how do you distribute it, how do you store it, that kind of thing. So. Are there representatives from the Public Service Department there? Uh, usually not from the Public Service Department, but we almost always ask the applicants to show up. 
we do get feedback from the Public Service Department. Yep. We also get feedback from the Aging Natural Resources or any other state agency that's that's involved. Right. Uh, but where's where's the Regional Planning Commission is just a separate entity. We we we, we literally have a voice in, in the matters mm -hmm. uh, as to whether or not it meets the regional plan. Right. Um, and how it how it impacts the regional plan. So. Um, I also serve on the Transportation Advisory Committee. I have for a long time. Transportation has always been an area of interest to me because uh, that was my, my career was in design of highway systems. Um, uh, again, that's a position that's available. It's, you guys reappoint that annually. <laughs> it should not be assumed that like I'm doing like a good job right now. I, thank you. Uh, that's, uh, that's, I appreciate that. But I, I do think it ought to be every year annually advertised as a position. Mm -hmm. Something else is interested, uh, you know, uh, that would be great. We had had that discussion about the board as well, yeah. just just to keep fresh energy or keep new energy in there. Yeah, uh, there is a, there is a position open there. There really should be an alternate. I cannot necessarily attend all the meetings, mm -hmm. and the reality is, is our meetings are typically attended by the the, the, the representative and the alternate. If the alternate is interested enough, so. Uh, I actually stepped down from the Transportation Advisory Committee a number of years ago, and the select board, uh, you may remember this, Brad, appointed a, a new representative of the Transportation Advisory Committee who had never attended a single meeting. Well, that isn't exactly representing the top of that. Uh, so we went back to the role model. <laughs> <laughs> I think Vince just took a note to add that. And then, that's about the other one. That's just that's where we are in those two. There's, there's not a lot of terribly exciting things going on either one of those okay. right now. And for a while, the Regional Planning Commission was working on it. Uh, revisions to the town, the regional plan, that would be of significant interest to the town of Berlin in more ways than one, depending on what they do within our region. Right. Um, there is a, a fair amount of conflict between some towns and some regions. Uh, we've seen it in Hartford. We've seen it in some other places. So. But that's not happening right now, so I'm just looking ready to report to you. So they're working on a new plan as currently? Is that what you said? No, no, I think we're at a point right now where we, we've, we've bought some time in terms of updating the regional plan, but I think within very short, or within probably within a year or two, let's start working on a new regional plan. So at that point, we need to watch it carefully. Okay. Anything else? Nope, that's, that's it for me, unless you have questions. Hi, everybody. I'm good. Thanks for joining us. Yeah, thank you for coming over. I appreciate the updates more than we anticipated. <laughs> <laughs> Ask Brad. I never stop. <laughs> <laughs> I won't put him on the spot. Like that. Uh, all right. Uh, next up, we have a town website change and server update. Okay. So that's me. Um, <clears throat> server update. I'm uh, expecting, hopefully, by the end of this week or early next week, the updated um, RFP from uh, RB Technology on the cost. They, in talking with them, they were willing to uh, consider holding the labor cost to the original, uh, but the equipment obviously is a concern because the prices are going up, and the wait time to get the equipment um, is the lead time is going to be a bit longer. So I'm waiting to get that. Uh, to finalize that, to bring that to you guys, to finalize that uh, portion of it. Uh, the other thing uh, with regards to that is the conversion of the email, because um, talking basically of doing this in three phases, really. Uh, we want to change our uh, domain site from the .org site to a .gov site. Mm -hmm. uh, we briefly talked about that. Um, on that one specifically, um, I would need a decision. I, I have the paperwork ready to go. Um, to do that, to start that process, I just need to know which name we want to use for the domain. The, there's two available that make sense, which is berlinvt.gov, we have berlinvt.org now, or um, townofberlinvt.gov um, are both available. I can get the application in to secure those for us going forward. Again, no charge now with the .gov sites as well. Um, we're still having issues with the .org domain owner that we pay for this site with. Um, 
uh, the best option at this point because the person that was listed as the administrator in the past for whatever reason had passed away. Uh, we've been chasing documentation. We've got some, but they want more uh, now uh, to, to move that so we can have administrative control over it. Or we can just let it expire. We can change to a .gov site and let that one expire and it goes back on the market for whoever should decide to get that .org site. I'm almost thinking that we should keep it for a while and have it re redirect to the new page. Yeah. yeah. That would be the it does this thing to do yeah, I mean, I don't if think I was, it expires until yeah. uh, late next year. Yeah, I'll double check. The if I wanted to mess with people, I'd buy it instantly as soon as it hit the market, and then yeah. you know you can you can essentially say, oh, you know, pay your fees here and collect no, exactly. money. And what looked like behalf of the town. Yeah. Um, there, there should be a transition period. For yeah. Sure. yeah. Um, as far as the name, I always think shorter the better, as long as it's consistent with other towns, and I think Berlin VT is consistent enough. I think it is. I agree. The shorter the better, and, and again. It's only th it's three letters change, so again, it should be simple yep. and pretty straightforward if we're going to do it. There'll, there'll be issues regardless with the domain yep. change, but uh, I, my recommendation would be to go with vt.gov, early mm -hmm. vt.gov. And then the email transition, how would that work? Concur. I, I was, yeah, I was looking at the proposal, 20 hours seems like a lot for the seems... number of users that, that the town has. That seems like, you know, one of my old jobs, my group was in charge of email conversions for, you know, a thousand people at a time. They're charging, by from what I can see, they're charging you to watch the little dial go around and around, um, and not actually hands on. So that would be something I'd bring up. The other thing is, I don't know why on earth we would have physical, a physical server here, and a rack and a backup. Very few people do that anymore. Um, you can buy those services, they're commodity now. You can buy them right through Microsoft to fit in with your suite here. Yep. Microsoft backs all that stuff up, it's all remotely done. RB Technologies can still manage that if, if they needed. Can it. Um, but I mean, you can save, we can save thousands of dollars by. Is that our 57, almost $5,700 part of this proposal RFP? Yeah, the 80, 8500 um, Nope, that was the email migration. Anyways, I was just looking at the different line items thinking like... Yeah, there's, there's some opportunity there, and I'm happy to... Uh, the benefit is talk about of going to the cloud is, is always up to date. Like, you know, getting a new leased car every year, right? You know, it's... And you have Microsoft or someone like that maintaining it. Who better to maintain a Microsoft product than Microsoft themselves? Um, I, I just think that there's... There's a bunch of money we can cut out here. I mean, there's you know, probably two thousand dollars just on this page, a couple thousand dollars on this page, mm -hmm. um, and I think it's just the way RB Technologies has always kind of done things here in Vermont. Um, it's not specific to us. Um, I, I am glad to see that they're moving to Microsoft products. That gives us more flexibility and. Yeah. You know, if we have a problem with a vendor, people were able to switch to someone else rather quickly, and and it's an easy transition, unlike some of the um, software and hardware that was being used before. So, yeah, I agree. So I will, uh, I'll take an action to uh, discuss with RB yeah. and look at uh, since we don't have the the new quote yet anyway, um, to to give us that option in there. Should we choose to not have a server on site? And go with Microsoft to, to include that option in their quote right. going forward. And because uh, you're right, we should, we should be able to save some money yeah. um, to, to cover that. So we might pick up what like monthly recurring cost, right? Yeah, monthly. Again, you know, I always look at it like a yearly recurring cost. Um, they do break it down monthly on the small accounts. Yeah. Um, you know, and over time, you may end up paying close to the same, but you never have to worry about replacing it again and having. 50 hours of labor time to do that, right? That's where your savings is. Yeah. 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 Well, we have a monthly storage fee. That's not, well, I don't know anything but with a server that doesn't really work. Well, the, the other part of it that I, I was a little nervous about, and Diane, I know you love this system, but the, the Nemeric <laughs> system scares the heck out of me. Oh, really? Yes. Oh, that's yes. crazy. Um, and I won't talk about it on live TV on the reasons why. Um, <laughs> 
but we, we should we should talk about what type of things we store there offline sometime. I think it's a good idea. Okay. So, um, if the board agrees, then uh, I think, uh, I mean, I would like to complete the application to request the BerlinBT.gov site and get that moving forward um, so we at least have that secured. Don't lose that, that not that we probably, it's very likely that would, but you don't lose that site option. Uh, we'll let the BT, the BerlinBT.org site run through a transition period before we decide to let it expire. Yep. I'll, I'll get the dates for that. What we wanted to do is just redirect. Yes, once we exactly. Get the site. We don't want to keep up. Uh, Not two sites, right. right. When, we're, when we're ready and up and running on the VT.gov site, then, then we can let that one fade off into the sunset. Yep. Uh, in the meantime, yeah, I'll redirect. And I'll get a timeline. I'll push um, Tech for a timeline on the uh, email to go to the Office 365. Okay. So, those will be the three phases, right? The, the, the domain, the email, and then the, the server or the, or the cloud. The other, yeah. the other potential option is to, I, I haven't looked enough about what the email would cost. Was the licensing in here for your email there, address? There, I believe there was a, a price per license. Per license per month. Some point. Twenty dollars per month. Have my copy. Yeah. I'll have to look at that again. There's, there may be some other options um, available specifically for email that would make you more consistent with the police department, yeah. um, and be able to share calendars with them and have a little bit more, uh, a little more continuity there. Free, yeah. free flow of data. Yeah, that'd be good. Yeah. The department too. Yeah. On that one, unless there's some questions. All set. You guys good? I, I, well, I, do I have, do we need to vote on the, the name at all, or I, I got approval to move forward on that? May as well. You, you can vote on it, or you can just take and agree to have Vince look uh, secure it. It's not going to cost anything, right? Right. The, the oh. .gov domains are free to okay. municip yeah. municipalities now. So it's not like we're voting on any Change. expenditure. Right, right. So, yeah. Long run, hopefully. It doesn't appear there's any opposition to it. So. <laughs> okay. Right, we'll just move forward. Good. All right. Uh, union uh, petition to add admin position to the bargaining unit. Yes, there's a letter in your package from uh, Mr. Cameron as well with his recommendations on that. Thank you, Bob. So, they want to add uh, one, one existing unit. Uh, the administrator position wants to uh, join the police union, become part of the union. So there's basically there's there's two options for this, right? We can agree to the board can agree to allow the position to become part of the unit unit, or require the union to file a petition uh, to hold the vote. Um, it's it's one person. The recommendation from uh, is she Cameron. wants to join with the union. Yes. So who would be her boss? Because right now you're her boss. Right. Not from a staff position, yes, right. but it'd be similar to the chief and the police staff, right? The, she would, would, would be involved be the with the, you know, have all the rights and benefits of the union contract. She'd have to be written into the this this contract as well. Would have to be revised to include that position mm -hmm. and all the rights and benefits thereof. But would she take, would, would the police chief tell her what to do first and then you? Yeah. Or was, okay, yeah. so you would not be in charge of her like you are now. Just want to get that clear. Yeah, I, th I think the, the current contract states that the police chief is first. Yeah. First, first point of contact, yeah. So who would take a vote? You said there were two options. One, just to allow it in a second. Right, the board can approve it to, to allow that position to become part of the union, or um, 
the board, we could um, petition the, have the union file, she would have to file a petition with the union to hold a vote. Um, it's a one person vote, basically, right? And it's okay. supposed to be a you know, secret ballot type of thing, right. uh, whether or not they want the union and so on. It's right. kind, of, kind of a mute point to, right. to go that way. You've reason. spoken with her, and she definitely wants it. She yeah. definitely the chief has spoken with her as well. So. Okay. so there's no point in making her petition. Correct. With uh, frustration. <laughs> <Anyway>. <coughs> um. How's that? I move approval to allow uh, the position to become part of the unit. Second. Any discussion? Those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you. All right, highway superintendent discussion on blower purchase. Yeah, the Trans Grants and Aid Program and bid review. He's probably in a non, he was going to try to call in. Um, he's, he's on the road, he had a <coughs> day today. So what I can tell you, in your package, there's a, a document for the uh, AIDS program. Let's we'll start with the easy one. Right, that just means signing that we're going to participate in the Municipal Roads Grant and AID program, like we do, I understand, every year. Uh, so that just needs to be signed. Uh, I think it's just the chair that signs that one, Justin, as well. Um, and then from the, the bids, <coughs> In your package is also a table of the, of the bids, and uh, what's highlighted in yellow was uh, Tim's recommendation. He did the uh, calculations. Oh, he just joined us. He's in the waiting room. Uh, we're going to let him come in. Excellent. Then she were going to have uh, the highway foreman um, start to give us a monthly report as well. Yep, I'm including that in my end of the month report. Okay. A section for Tim. Okay. And that guy will be in there. So, there were, actually, there was one in last month, so it was a short one. There'll be another one in this month's report. Okay. That'll be in there every month. Um, Tim, can you hear us? I can hear you, can you hear me? Yep. Yes, perfect. Yeah. Perfect timing, we just got to your uh, you on the agenda. So I was explaining, I'll let you explain the details uh, uh, of the chart that uh, I put together with the uh, the bids uh, where you chose uh, Northeast for the materials and Newton for the trucking based on your, your calculations of overall price and the fact that uh, uh, Northeast was uh, willing to hold that price basically for a three-year term as well. Yeah. So I, we received all the bids uh, two weeks ago, went through them, um, and I looked through everybody, and with adding up the pricing of the material and trucking and uh, just the quality for the town, the Northeast Material and uh, Jeff, uh, I think is the best option for the town of Berlin. And then uh, both of them offered, and I spoke with, that they were willing to hold the prices on that material and trucking for the next three years um, with the way, so that, that would, we could set a good budget for our road material for the next couple of years. Tim, how much uh, three-quarter plant mix do we buy a year? Uh, we we plan on right around eight thousand tons, uh, without putting all the slips together. Uh, I don't know exactly. Um, I could, you know, I mean, I could figure it out by calling them. They'll tell us exactly through their computer system how much we get each year. But we figure on eight thousand ton of three quarter plant mix. We had, we, we had quote, Tim, we had a quote a certain certain tonnage on the uh, on the bid. Right. What that? Seventy five cents extra. 
I believe we had a quote a specific tonnage on the bid. About yeah, with eight thousand. 8,000 ton of three quarter, 5,000 ton of inch and a half, and then with the, with the sand it went out at 5,000 yards. How do we, I'm just under the trucking line, I want to slow it down a little bit. How do we, I understand what your recommendation is, Tim, but so I see Gillespie's has an hourly rate, and then you've got Newton with a tonnage rate. Yeah. So it doesn't look like the, they bid the same way. Well, did your RFP ask for a specific way? Okay. It was either way. So you asked them to bid either way? Yeah, whatever. You know what I mean? A lot of people don't. Like, Gillespie bids everything by hourly rate because they, you know what I mean, they go to a lot of places that don't scale material out. So he right. said that he would bid it by an hourly rate. And, so how much will, what's the, what's the price difference between Gillespie and Newton um, for same materials out of Northeast Granite? Uh, I, it's pretty close in pricing. What's that mean? But Right, so what are the prices? What's Gillespie's price uh, per ton break down to by when they're doing it hourly so we can make a comparison? I'm not sure. I don't. I'm not sure it off the top of my head on what it breaks down to. I I did it. The paperwork set my on my desk. Fortunately, I didn't make it back today. Right. So using had to hang up. using Northeast materials for plant mix is it's an extra seventy two hundred and fifty dollars above Pikes. Why why yeah. would we do that? Why well. With Pike's material, it's not that great of a road material. Um, it breaks down real easy. It gets slimy when it rains. Um, and uh, the last time they used it, a couple of years, well, I think it was four or five years ago when they stopped buying it from Pike, they were getting flat tires all the time because the ledge is sharp when they crush it. It gets sharp, sharp edges, so every time we grade, it fluffed up those rocks and people were getting flat tires all over town so they stopped I was willing to try one year they crushed it differently they double crushed it and they said it was costing too much money and they didn't want to do it that way so they stopped doing it and went back to the old way and uh, it's just back to the other they're, they're back to their old way of just crushing everything once so it's like sharp stone people were getting flat tires and where it's all over town and, it, and it's soft material so it breaks down and roads get greasy and slimy when it rains You're right. yeah all right um shot ledge is we've had, you know what i mean we've <laughs> we've used the northeast material for i think going on four maybe five years now and we don't we can almost grade in the rain, and it doesn't get greasy, and it packs down well. We don't get a lot of wear. <laughs> the roads seem to hold up real good yeah. with that material. So, you know what I mean? We, we can cut back a little bit on grading if, if the roads, you know I mean, if they don't wear out as fast, it means we can, they stay, they stay better for maintenance wise as well. So, yeah, no, I was just I was just making sure we had an answer on why we were paying that much more. No, no. And as far as the per ton per hour, uh -huh. I mean, what do they talk? I mean, how the truck uh, ten wheeler hold? How much does the ten wheeler hold? Uh, uh noons. Well, they're all triaxles now, so they're running. Most of them are running right around 21 tons. But they're running with dump trailers. And, and if they're running with dump trailers, they're almost 30, I believe. 20, 30, I believe. So, what, what's Gillespie's truck? Is it a triaxle? The two newer ones that Gillespie have are triaxle. 
pretty damn close either way. Yeah. Well, Newton, I mean, when, when by the ton or by the hour, it depends on how close the, the, the mix is. Yeah. I think, I think the other thing that I kind of thought of that plays into it a little bit, if they get held up in traffic for some reason, you're paying for it. I mean, we're, we're paying for the hour for them to sit there. If we're paying by the ton, it's whatever he brings in the yard getting paid for it. So if it took him three hours to get one load there, we're only paying, I think it breaks down to like 70, right around $70 yeah. load per ton on the tonnage side. So if it takes him two hours to get a load there, only gets paid, you know, for what he brings in, not if he was sitting in traffic somewhere. Right. Or waiting in line behind three other trucks. Yeah, right. What's that? Or waiting in line behind three other trucks waiting to get filled. Yeah, yeah. yeah. If they're, you know, I mean, if Northeast gets busy on a day, they they could sit up there for 20 minutes or a half hour, 40 right. minutes before they get yeah. loaded. I've heard that before. Our trucks have definitely gone up to get bigger stuff for other projects. Get line behind somebody if they're busy. And the town doesn't get charged for that. Okay. By the I would recommend in the future that we just have it all bid per ton and not give them the hourly option. Well, I think some yeah, of these no, places we can, like, we can do that. Like Lake Yield, they're doing it by the, the yard because they don't have scales there, right? So they do it by the bucket or by the yard. Yeah. I think that's why it's in this area, but yeah, you're talking about just yeah, apples, with, apples. With that, with that, that part of it, yeah, it's, it's not, it's not too many pits around our area that scale things out. Like, that's why the tonnage, or um, by the yard, so it's hard to on, a cubic yard. break it all down. How much is a cubic yard? How much does a cubic yard weigh? Uh, uh, 20... Seven five for gravel or sand and yard. Two thousand seven hundred and fifty pounds. They go on a they go on a one right. one point three percentage when they try to figure it out, yardage to tonnage. And then of course it varies on the material. Sand and gravel are two different densities, so they some of them go on a one point six, one point three percentage. I was just curious if the review was substantially lower than Northeast. Tim, what is what's Northeast material? It's all granite. It's what we've been using is yeah. out in the yard there. It's all granite material. There's no dirt, no added bone or anything like that. That's why it wears so good. Yeah. It's just straight up granite. They take the blocks out of the quarry that they don't use, and they just crush them. All right, what's next? Tim. Tim is still up to talk about the blower that he'd like to purchase. Yeah, so I know we, we spoke about that last year some. Um, we're going to have to find out what we're going to do with that blower. And I was wondering that if we could spend that erosion money to purchase that uh, buffalo blower to help blow our ditches out, keep leaves out, and uh, cut back on some erosion there, help our roads maintain them in the fall, get them ready for winter. Tim, um, I have a question for you. Because this is the first I've heard of this. So were you going to yeah. buy this in June? Because if you don't buy this in June, it's FY22. And I, I spoke, I spoke with the dealer. Um, they're pretty like uh, a street fair field is the dealer for the Northeast uh -huh. on on that. On the blower. Uh, and yeah, they have one, and they would they would get us the bill. I mean, they would for we could get the purchase done before the end of the month. Just just to be clear, Tim the. The blower was just, a, the price they quoted you, I believe, was just a little under 8K, and you've got 9,500, you said, in the budget. 
Yeah. Okay. What do you think, Brad? Who's that? What do you think? Those aren't dedicated funds, are they? No, but I don't know if he's got 9500 I have to go look. I just, yeah, I looked at the um, the one you gave me, the, okay. the monthly sheet. Yeah. Can we rent one? Over. Tim, are you there? I think he fell over. I think towns are just starting to use them, aren't they? Oh. North yeah. yeah, there's yeah, there's a couple of towns I think. Oh. Tim, you're back. Yeah, I can hear you guys. Can you hear yep. me? Yep, we can now. Maybe you want to explain a little more depth of what you want to use, like you were talking to me about what you want to use that blower for besides just the culverts, like, uh, you know, in the fall for when you want to grade the, grade the roads and they're covered with leaves and pine uh -huh. needles. Where are you going to see? Yeah, with the, the fall of time? the year, well, even right now, like if you drive over on cross down, the outside of the road, the last three feet, two feet of the road, where the traffic works it off is all pine needles. And if we grade that in, to grade that road, all that pine needle gets caught in the road, and it doesn't lay out. It falls up, it makes potholes, and then if it does get broke down, it starts turning to mud. We can't. I mean, the road doesn't get laid back out flat, and then when it, if it does fall, it comes off in a big fall on the side of the road. And then in the fall of the year, with leaves and the same thing with pine needles, which not going to be different rolling off on the side of the road and going in the ditches and creating damp. Ditches, so if we blow all that material off, it blows it back into the wood, keeps our ditches open, and the water gets to flow out freely. It doesn't create those dams. I'm just curious. Yeah. Hmm. Well, how, how effective is this? Have you, seen, have you seen this being used by other municipalities? Yeah. Town of Northfield bought one last fall. Theirs is a three-point hitch mount one because they own their own roadside mower. Uh, same thing with the town of Roxbury. Town of Roxbury has one. They have, I think they've had theirs for almost a year now. Um, and everybody that I've talked to about it. They, they got a ton of background stuff. Roxbury is all my basically. Right? It's not state. We have a fair amount of dirt roads, but 52 miles. 52 miles. Do we? The back road? Yeah. yeah. Oh, dirt roads. Dirt roads. Dirt roads. Yeah. And I know that I spoke with the dealer, and uh, he sold some to a couple other towns up north so far. Uh, they're very happy with it. The uh, town of Burke said that just in a short bit of time, the storm damage that it's paid for itself. Have you ever used one? Not personally, no, but I, uh, well, no, not personally, but when, when we started looking at them, uh, Nate said that he's used them. They use them quite a bit on the golf course, too. They're a little bit smaller scale uh, <coughs> to do the same thing, to blow the debris off the golf course. He said they work amazing. So I'm, I'm just thinking about this. You're going along, well, used by Road Brook. Brookfield Road, you're blowing out the dishes, is blowing all this dust and debris into everyone's yards. Well, we wouldn't do it right in somebody's, you know what I mean, per se, like their door yard. Like you would blow it at their house. But like when you get down past your house where it's just trees and stuff, mainly where the leaves are going to fall, that's when you blow the ditches out and get them open. So, Tim, when you talk erosion. When you talk erosion control, what account is it? Because I don't see anything says erosion. Are we talking? Um, it's down toward the bottom. I don't know the number. Well, no, are we talking resurface gravel, asphalt? I mean, what are we talking no. about? No, no. It's erosion control. It's down in the bottom of that page. Um, it's not really what we oh, buy. Oh, I see it. Okay, yeah, I see it. Okay, yeah, I do show 
that we budgeted ten thousand. You spent three hundred and sixty-nine dollars. So I'm showing ninety-six thirty. Yeah. Yeah. So what, what was the intent of that money to put ten thousand dollars in an erosion control account? Like we must have had a plan at one point to do right. something, right? With select board. State. Just, it also state well, requires a lot of that goes up. Last year, before I started, they they bought a huge pile of the eight inch miner, what they call it, fall in miner. Yeah. Uh, still got a bunch of it left out behind the shop. And that's what we buy the hay, the grass seed. And one year, I think they bought the uh, mulcher out of that account. Hold, hold on, Tim. Brad's trying to talk. The erosion control the state requires that any uh, any ditch work or whatnot we're, we do, we're doing has to either be lined with stone or seeded in with seed. Yeah. That's erosion control. Right. But we're not doing that, right Tim? Yeah we are. Oh but okay. we bought we got not to Barry Town had a bunch of hay left last year and we bought it for less than two dollars I think it was like either a dollar or two dollars a bale. And they bought a whole bunch of it last spring with what money they had left. We still have a bunch of that hay left and a bunch of that stone left that they bought last year. That's why we didn't get all into that this year. We're still using up what we had from last year left. So we're going to put hay in the ditches after we clean them out, and then we're going to blow it out and see how it works. Well, well geez, I'm just messing with so it. So like down, down boy Black Rover, we've been ditching there. When we're done, we're going to go back through and put grass seed and mulch down because the grass will cut down on the erosion with the state. Right. And then the dirt that will wash out and go to the culvert down into the stream for water. Right. And then if it's at a certain percentage of grade, that will have stone line ditches. So they don't wash out they hold it. Okay. I know I got a meet with the state, uh, Alan, because that's Alan saying. We got a few roads like the uh, I think where Dave Wilcox lives. Um, that one, they West have yeah. it on the list. They have it on the list. So that one's going to have to be self mine. What we do for them doing that project that they want done. Okay. All right. Is there anything? How was that? How was it oh. there? Okay. All right. So we need uh, probably a couple of different motions there. Uh, Tim, how many uh, bids did you get on this? Is there only one machine in the Northeast right now? There's, yeah, they're the only dealer for the Northeast um, that deal with that the buffalo blower that everybody's buying around here. Um, and it's the only size that I found that Toro on the lawn mowers, they make smaller ones, yeah. but they're like go behind side by side and lawn tractors and, and stuff. Um, for like the municipal size, that size of a blower, that buffalo blower, the other, I think he said the company is from New York, way out by the Great Lake, and I think they're the distributor for them in the Cleveland area. Uh, yeah, each big fair field. So this one is uh, self-powered. It's yeah, it's got its own motor on it. It's all self-powered. It's just being towed behind the pickup. What's the uh, what's the uh, what's the what's the uh, cubic feet per minute on the blower? I don't know off the top of my head. How many horsepower? I think you said it's a sixteen horsepower motor. Okay. It might be twenty. I'm not. Right, take action. And yeah, we can't. He said that the Kohler motors. Yeah, I mean, if we went out to bid, it wouldn't be done this year. Yeah. And I did 
Not the vendors. Uh, well, I personally, I have no objection to it as long as I mean other towns are using them. They seem to be su successful. Uh, I think they both got them last fall. Yeah. But I mean, it, um, I understand the uh, wanting to keep the organic matter out of the roadway because all, right. all that does is turn to mud. All right. You feel like the, the process for the triple RFP or whatever was sufficient. I think so, because I mean, if they're the only dealer in the Northeast, and I mean, unless you want to go out to out to uh, New York or down into Pennsylvania, here, then you have the problem with service. All right. Okay. Uh, what's the resale value on these things, Tim? <laughs> I don't think anybody sells them. That's good. That's a good <laughs> answer. <laughs> All right. I was broken. Uh, trying to look up online. No, I think we're. I think we're good. Um, so I'm gonna get the CFS. So the uh, he has the money. Okay, so I'm nine thousand. Well, he hasn't bought anything. I don't know. I'm gonna be here. I'm gonna have fun. What was the total cost of this? The total cost was about eight thousand dollars. I'm showing ninety-six hundred. As long as there's nothing outstanding yeah. for bills. Tim, you you said the cost is eight thousand. Yeah, um, I sent, I don't know if Vince has a quote right there. I got a quote from him, uh, I think the weekend of last, not last week, the end of last week. He sent it over the weekend. It was right around 8K. It was cool. Yeah, it was like, I think 8,100 with tax. Yeah. Well, it's no tax. Or not with tax, it was with tax. Yeah. So, I think it was, I don't because I can't get the email on my phone, so it's on the computer at work. Make motion, Brad. Let's hear it. Can I get a motion on this? Yes, you do. <laughs> uh, move to allow the road foreman to purchase the blower from the ditches. For 8100. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Well, uh, still with us. Do, do we need to? We uh, also need to probably yeah. do a motion on this, right? Letter of intent? I think so. Yes. I said aye. Yeah, there's an authorization representative signatory line. So. Right. Put the chair and sign it as well. Yeah, you got to get to that. So, move to have the board chair sign letter of intent to participate in this world's grant program. Yeah, that's, that's the yearly grant program. We have to so do that every year. So. All right, any further discussion? What's that? Bruce? So that's that's yeah. every year. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Getting it done now. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Aye. What, about, what about the, uh, the bed acceptance of the Oh, yeah. yeah. Good call. Make a motion to approve um, using uh, Northeast Materials and uh, Newton uh, construction to uh, for our inch and a half, three quarter inch, and winter sand. Second. Any discussion? <laughs> All those in favor? Say aye. 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 Motion carries. Okay. Aye. Okay. All right. Traffic, traffic and parking ordinance decision yep. on public hearing. We, we talked about that. You may have some more questions, and I can give you an update on the recent developments as well. The, the big thing tonight it would be the public hearing date. When the board would like to have a hold a public hearing on that. As far as with respect to the revised ordinance changing the speed limits on Brookfield Road and uh, Brookfield Mirror Lake and Richardson Road, you got to get 30 days notice, right? Yep. Yep. Probably 30 days, 31 days from now. <laughs> 
And that that meeting after that, right at the beginning of it, okay. start with a public hearing and go right, right into our meeting. That's right. Uh, the regular is going to be yeah. one day. So, yeah. Okay. Thirty-one days. Next next select board meeting. Perfect. All right. Um, okay. well, look, that'd be the first meeting in August. Yeah, that's what it sounds. I think so. I'll look at the calendar, but it'd probably be the first meeting in August. Sounds about right. Perfect. Perfect. All right, approval of license, permits, vouchers, and applications. Move to approve payroll, payroll warrant 21 through 26 for payroll from June 6, 2021 to June 21st, 2021. Paid on June 23rd, 2021 in the amount of $40,224.10. Payable warrant 21G25 with checks 21 213 to 21241 in the amount of fifty-two thousand three hundred and sixty-eight dollars and fifty-six cents. I'll second that. Any discussion? All those in favor, say aye. 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 Motion carries. Um, that wasn't on the this wasn't on the agenda, but it was in the back. Um round table. Flo, do you have anything for round table? I do not, but thank you. Brad? Don? I do not. I do. I got a whole list of things, sorry. If I'm allowed. All right. Uh, Why not? <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, just a, uh, re one is a reminder uh, of the documents that need to be signed in the package. Um, the other one, I'd just like to give the rest of the board a quick update if they want it on the parking on uh, Payne Turnpike South and the meeting that I had with the city of Montpelier in regards to that and the Darling Hill parking um, as well. So I met with the state and I met with the city of Montpelier on Payne Turnpike South just past the turn to Brookfield Road. Basically the state is out of it. Uh, we'd have to, the state side next to the interstate because as we talked a little bit before, federal requirements would come into play and permitting and all that. When we did the measurements uh, with the state as well, um, we are within our right of way on the Montpelier side, on the pond side of that. Um, so technically we didn't, didn't even have to approach Montpelier with it, but we did. Um, and I went to the council meeting, uh, well, I Zoomed uh, on the council meeting they had that night when um, Bill Frazier was presenting it to him from the site visit that we had. Yeah. We can go roughly from the end of the guardrails, 900 feet and stop just short of the corner uh, and have all that by just grading off the topsoil, maybe putting down a little bit of gravel based on what Tim find, finds yeah. there, because he was there, um, and add 900 feet of parking. So we can get 30 to 40 cars right there off the, off the road uh, along that stretch. So that's, and Montpelier is, is fine with it, basically. Um, the question that uh, Tim and I had on that, if we put that many there, do we get rid of the parking on Brookfield Road entirely? Those nine spots that are signed down there to stop the congestion and, and, and such. That's just a question um, when, we, when we make the decision, something to think about. Personally, I think we should get rid of them. Well. Old habits die hard. Well, we're at least worse than no parking. Yeah, well, the thing is, if you leave those nine spots there and then and really push the enforcement of the no parking, yeah. we should probably we should probably consider that. My opinion. I I, I, I understand what you're saying, but uh, we, we should reduce it because when you park a full size pickup at the end, which many people do, you're sticking out into the roadway. Yeah. I would take and uh, perhaps change the way they park there, or but you can modify it. Um, I mean, if you want to close that, you can give it a whir, and if uh, uh, and see how how they park along the Payne Turnpike North or South there. Yeah. Um, if they if they if they uh, screw that up, that's yeah. going to be hard to do. But yeah. But um, it should be. 
I would I wouldn't take and give up those nine. I mean, I'd take and mark it and, and uh, if you want to put some stone or barrier there, fine. But uh, okay, I'll work with that again. But I wouldn't take and uh, I'll I'll work with Tim on that. I'll work this. The only thing I was thinking they do it in the winter as well, and it's a pain in the butt. Yeah. We may put time limits on it as well, but I'll come up with a proposal then. Yeah, the time limits is too hard. Yeah. 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 I mean, uh, unfortunately, if, if we were fully staffed in, in the police department, maybe. But. You know, you know what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah I do. I know. There's other things they need to do other than focus on that. So that's that update. The other one is on Darling Hill. The access. Uh, we went up there again with, with Bill Frazier after looking at this one, and just beyond where the stones are now, on the Montpelier property, there is a landing, an old log landing. You can get a hundred foot by hundred foot parking area in there just by doing a little bit of grading, probably very little material. Um, Again, the council in Montpelier was was open to do that as well to get the parking off the roadway, um, and so that's um, there's a information package in, in yeah. your folder as well that shows what we what I talked to Montpelier about that they're they're on board with. Um, yeah, so it's uh, at some point in the next meeting or two when I get word back if they have any further comments from what I sent them, I'll put it on the agenda again to just make the decision on. Uh, on if we want to move forward with that. Uh, what else did I have? I do my notes. Any Parker submission trailers there? There will be roof. Believe it or not. Tremendous amount of room. Yeah. But I put all four of the one right in there. Fisher Road, uh, I'm going to bring that one back up for the uh, special meeting with um, Onion River there. Otter Creek. Otter Creek. Otter Creek. Otter Creek. Otter Creek. <laughs> We have a date, and it really should be this week, if we want to try, well, if we want to look at all the options to try to get it completed this year with the exception of the... The biggest thing is just ordering the, the culvert itself. Yeah, but it's not cheap. I mean, we're... Well, we've got to do it one time. way or the other, right? No, yeah, but... The, 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 well, the, question, the option is, if we take it out of the bid documents and the town fronts the cost for it, we can get it ordered. That's what I'm saying this week, if the board agrees. We can get it ordered this week and get them uh, to start manufacturing it. What's the lead time cool. with, for, to completion on it? Uh, I think the culvert was uh, six to eight weeks right now. Would we have to pay up front and then, and then they We'll get invoiced, it? yeah. We'll get invoiced for it. It's, uh, it's, it's almost uh, half a million dollars with the It's over that, yeah. It was like right. 600000 Yeah, right. So. Front back or sideways, though we gotta, we're gonna have to. Yeah, the other track. option is to leave it in the bid, and we we won't, you know, we won't get the work done this year. Right. More than likely. I, again, we won't get it actually completed because best case, if we do this, we'll get the work done, the culvert in, and we'll get temporary pavement in to open the road for the winter. And then they'll have to rip it up and do permanent paving next yeah, year. Yeah. yeah. It would be nice to get it opened up. Oh yeah. What does the board wish to do for, for, for a meeting? You need an hour? I think it could be less than an hour. I'll, I'll uh, prime Otter Creek to make sure he has everything. And again, you have all, almost all the information in the package that I gave you, so you can preview it before the meeting and be ready with your with your any questions uh, for him as well. I could do Wednesday night. I am not available Thursday night or Friday night. Up to narrow people's options. You can still go ahead. I just can't do those two nights. And I'll, I'm going to meet David's coming in to pick up his package tomorrow, so I can ask him um, as, as far as the meeting as well, if he can be in attendance and whatever the board decides tonight. Do you have any issues, Floor Brad? Early, late. Early. Time you want to start? Yes. Just let me know. Yes. What day are you looking at, Vince? We're looking at a day next week. What about this Wednesday? Week. Or this no, week? What about Wednesday? I can't Wednesday of this week. I can Tuesday or Thursday. Is it this week only, or are you looking at next week as well? We're, we're, we're trying to do it this week so we can get the decision made so that we can. Time to order. What time are you looking at? No, I can't, we can't do it tomorrow. Wednesday. 
I have to warn it tomorrow if we're doing it Wednesday. She's asking what time on Wednesday. Whatever you guys want to make work, I'll, I'll make it work. Earlier the better. Yeah. Five. Okay. I'm going to be dirty. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> But I'll come up here after it's right from work, so it's easier that way. Right? That'll be fine. What's that, Flo? I will make five o'clock work on Wednesdays. Okay, in person? Uh, yeah. Okay. In person. I had a family emergency tonight, but I will be there in person on Wednesday. Okay. Well, I'll still put the Zoom on in. package also we received another letter uh, on good Sam uh, somebody that's not it's a concern uh, that they have so I put that in the in your package as well you can read that at your convenience but it's for information for you it's just a lot of concern there regarding that so it's all right to give that individual your cell phone number well it's, uh, it's it was anonymous Oh, it was. Yeah. yeah. There was no. Uh, was no oh, I know who it is. Just from the. Yeah, right I yeah. thought you might. Thanks for all this. Okay. So. That that was it. Thank you, Justin. All right. For that. Uh, no executive session, right? No, sir. Move to adjourn. Probably second. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. We're adjourned.